Welcome back. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 8 and Third Reich events installed. Let's get going. We're going to continue January 1940. Oh, good. Dave accepted. Okay, submarine fire control advance. We're going to get a bunch of these techs popping up very quickly because of just go to the new year and um, mild penalties for tech rushing it by one year have gone away so they things will happen a lot faster I'm gonna switch over to more port weapons here or infantry focus A little faster in peacetime. And so supplies, okay, well, still doing plenty of supply production. Okay. Integrated armored fighting vehicle support battalions into um, particular brigades, which is good. All around. What's the other one? Didn't I just start that? Um, okay. Mm, don't know. Medium velocity gun. See, we're going to go with Arctic Warfare Equipment. Start research on that. We'll be going to the Arctic or cold climates before we get to desert um, conditions. And who else are we yet able to? Soviets, yes. Got lots of money, need lots of supplies. Okay, Romania declined, but got the Soviet deal. Landing craft flotillas have advanced. That is also very good. Yeah, since it's a more current tech, we'll go with that. What do we need to do still? And tactics and defense. These two get to that. Okay, well, good to know. We'll uh, we have our national recruiting policy to deal with. Make sure we don't hit the Danziger War button. I'm still going with the balanced approach.
I want quality, but I want also numbers because we are not doing. I well, normally I'm used to seeing like 14 or 16 hundred at this point, not just a thousand. Twin engines, so we've just got that. Well. No, we're not buying fuel. Okay, advanced education. That is good. Very good news. And the other one is hmm, short barrel, okay. See how Japan is doing. Well, they're pushing against in against the Ma and Yunnan as well. Monumental. Yeah, we'll do rocket engines. And I'm just looking, we got a pretty healthy supply. Situation at the moment. I'm still going to keep it in the positive. Well, in the positive. So if we need to grow for more um, selling of supplies or just other needs. But it will allow us to shift more into production of new units. Okay, we've got some divisions we need to put onto the map. Okay. Well, no, I think we're going to put it down here. I think it's a very good choice, but I'm going to go with Booby.
and another Panzer Grenadier Division. I'm just for the moment wanting to till I do my reorganization. Save my um, skill level fours, the ones that start at that level, for um, core and higher commands until they're till all the cores are filled. Okay, more technological slots because of advanced education, I believe. Let's do radar for cruisers. Now, you also fuel now. Soviets decline. Now, aren't we producing? Okay, we're producing two. These will be out by the end of the month. But then again, energy is cheap. We'll get a cushion of that as well. is going to be bad for business on some of these trades. Okay, armored fighting vehicles, tracks, and suspensions. So we've maxed out the levels there, so we will shift that there. Medium armor designs. You know what? Uh, artillery brigades have advanced. Shift that over to there. Mass events. That is advanced. Okay. I like to increase manpower. Just like to decrease in ICs, but. Those help the uh, have the yearly um, party rallies that will help also um, quite a bit. Once here, hydrophones. There we go. We want to escort our convoys and medium fuel tank research so that we have a whole plethora of particularly medium types to we're going to go with naval bombers Yep, see, as soon as I do that, I gotta pause it, so. Don't really remove the clock that much forward. Ah, this makes me more. Ending craft flotilla is increased to four. 
it. Yes. Okay. How's production doing? Okay. I need to look at increasing a few other things here. Lots of aircraft in production, though I'm going to want them all. fighters to keep oh this is getting close so we'll leave that there actually we're gonna bump those down Get that down Okay, Air Force HQ has advanced. That is wonderful. We like that a lot. And we can still let that go. Uh, lots of benefits to them. Plus it will give us some more um, options. That, yes, we want to keep continue the deal. Do some IC supplies and money, but get oil and rare materials. And a big... Um, Bonus in oil, along with improved relations with the Soviets. Okay, new monument build, menu build. Ah, new monumental buildings for the nation. Let's see the plans. Okay, and that there puts them. So let's take a quick look and see the strategic effects for the buildings. So, movie studio, that helps Daily Descent, but I don't think we're going to need that too much. We don't get that option. That's for communists. Uh, that's good if you're an intelligence player, though it does help research efficiency, so it's not bad, but I'm not that big on that.
Imperial War Ministry is very good. It represents, obviously, well-developed um, organization, which, again, is sort of the thought, is the German general staff already in the Imperial War Ministry that should be there from the start, probably, but then again, more than half of these almost should be um, there from the start, so... It makes trying to earn them not that good, but I think the War Ministry would be a good because you know, like the feared National Police Building should already be there with the SS and a few other things like that. But okay, so we're going to go with Imperial War Ministry. Okay, Slovak factories. January 1931, another event from um, George 1941, contributed by um, German and Slovak and the Slovak state, uh, signed an agreement on a war economy. Obviously, this happened after the war had started, though I don't know. It should, maybe we should make dependent that Germany is at war, but, so we'll think about that for future um, needs. We'll be working for the war effort. So this is, um, you know, Slovakia is a puppet state. It most assuredly is. Um, and this is just the setup to better facilitate um, Slovak Slovakia's integration with the German uh, needs and plans and what, you know, they need and what they can supply um they're already a puppet and already have the puppet mechanism so we'll lose some supplies and money getting it organized up but we'll gain just a bit on some of the research so yes 37 millimeter or 38 millimeter or 38 centimeter sorry siegfried k yeah we'll go for that yeah flieger schul too was formed April 1934, and the school was named after 1940. Okay, so rename Rocastas. A little bit of well, considerable money, a little bit of metal and supplies. Gain more officers, which we would like, and gain yes, we'll go for that. Kampflieger Schulen three and four. Long range pilots. So this is for larger type pilot set situations. Training. Okay, yes, good. We will again cost approximately the same amount, even more officers, and a bunch of in essence resources for bonuses on certain tactics. That's great. I'm all for those type of things in events because if you could just have a constant oh dump more supplies dump more supplies dump more supplies then you would have a situation where um could really unbalance the game you know if it was up to the player to just make that decision and not not you know just a few unique events so yes, war ministry, we're going to build this. A lot of money, supplies, metal, and descent. Still don't entirely understand the, the descent thought behind it. I always did for the university, because universities seem to, at least in my lifetime experience, breed descent. Maybe not so much in the Third Reich or the Soviet Union, but here. But I guess it's just a mechanism to force us to shift supply, or shift a certain amount of production to lower the descent and forming of a bunch of Flieger cores. Yay. And which is okay, uh, industrial production. Because of um, I presume the Slovak factories, we've 
jumped up into the next level there. Just make sure we don't have any of the others read it out that we're dumping. No, okay. We'll work on civil defense. That's useful for repairing both our damage as well as damage we inflict on areas that we are then occupying. As you know, I tend to concentrate my air units in just a few um, Flieger cores, but having all those extra ones will allow us to expand eventually into like the Mediterranean and other fields. Okay, detached um, Liebstandart Adolf Hitler, or Liebstandart SS Adolf Hitler, detached um, to the 22nd. 227th uh, Infantry Division A unit, basically reconnaissance unit. Okay, good. We'll go with that. And the 1940 International, the 4th International Winter Sports Watch. Uh, this is the last year that I know that this was held. It was held during the war, once the war broke out. If you notice, compared to the earlier events, um, much fewer um, attendees in the flags uh, so you know we still have um, at this point um, the Netherlands as well as you know, like Yugoslavia which aren't yet in the Ags access but um, obviously Italy which was Romania and what really weren't at this point Oh, that's... No, I'm thinking that I was... That's not... Oh, boy. I'm messing up flags here. It's Slovakia showing up there, which was obviously a puppet. So, those nations, yeah, here they are listed, are the nations that attended. I did look the flags up at one point. And by holding these games, we'll lose descent, which was nice because we just had that descent hit, hit there. Cost us a little supplies, money, but we also gain on good relations with potential allies. Okay, you Nazi spy debuts. This, I presume, even the youngsters know who the um, Three Stooges were. They, um, some of the cast members changed over the years, but Mo was always there. Um, Mo, Larry, and Curly are the, the famous three, and the, the three at this time. Um, Shemp shows up later, and whatever else. Um, this is the first uh, comedy lampoon in America against the Nazis. As you can see, it even made it to um, uh, notice of some of the U.S. Senators in, in um, the United States Senate. I think they were Senators or were they Representatives? I don't know. Um, so it was a bit controversial because it really um, slams Hitler and Mussolini and crew um, pretty hard. Uh, so, and it um, wasn't taken well by the Germans, of course. So we disrupt our relations with them. Okay. Industrial efficiency advanced. Yay. So, now we're going to need these fair, well, we want them as soon as we can get them. And let's see, steel at three. So we can do steel production now. It's pushing the tech a little bit. Let's see, do we have any now? We have a lot of civil defense bonus, but we'll do that now to get these going. I do want to get more, you know, coal and oil and whatnot too.
No. Okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, broadcasting advance. That is great. That will allow us... Keep it the National one. Yeah, what's this other one? Uh, why is it not let me move the... Okay. Click on that. That is... Uh, truck and prime mover advance. Liability has advanced. Alright. That is good. We're going to go to set up a bridging. And since we you know, since we're, we have the slot, we're also going to do salt weapons. Okay, now is the time. How long would the four-year plan have continued? Um, I don't know. Obviously, Goering had a lot of power. They might have did another four-year plan or something like that. But the war started, so. They continued um, most definitely with working to um, expand both the industry and the um, uh, raw material resource extraction in Germany. But the focus really did shift much more. Because that's what, if you, if you look at the effects of it, um, much more uh, with expanding those industries than what... Um, to war production now so as soon as that is over we don't want growing in charge of this basically um, he just his him in charge of the armaments increases resources which is nice but and helps because he likes light aircraft helps to declare an air organization he has even more power but money and land organization is hurt um, and others aren't really overly helpful Did I pass it, or just didn't get down far enough yet? Ah, Fritz Toad. We've talked about him quite a bit um, as um, head of organization Toad, both in the production of the um, Autobahn system as well as the West Wall. He, um, probably a little before this time, I'm not exactly sure of the date, but was put in actual in charge of sort of armaments production. But we're going to basically, because there's only one slot, um, Goering doesn't disappear from managing things such as um, Reichwehr Hermann Goering. So he still has an influence in the economy, um, not just as head of the um, Luftwaffe, but he's also in charge of the forest ministry, which obviously the forest ministry has got to have play in the economy and things like um, lumber, which is a critical material. You make rifle stocks out of it. You make uh, uh, some airframes, maybe not so much in Germany, but um, many things in construction still use lumber that are needed. So lumber is obviously a, a, a very needed resource. So there, but as well as like Reichwehr, Kermin Goering and other things, he still is in charge of it. I'm just looking at who has the biggest impact. It doesn't mean that, well, let's see, I'm looking for a, because uh, like we have him here as Reichwehr Kermit Goering. Um, you know, um, Robert Ley is Leiter der Deutsches Arbeitersfreund. He's still in charge of all the labor um, in Germany for production, which obviously, is armaments production so he has um, an impact but I don't pick him um, you know if you, you want to increase ruling party support because he was very much um, a proponent of the strength through joy type holiday um, elements so that will people will be more friendly to your um, your ruling party if they, they get lots of holidays and that kind of things are put on for them and that will reduce your daily descent so if you have 
you know, you want to increase this to work work to do that. Um, you know, how big of popularity you have, which is a good thing to do, and you want to lower your daily descent. It's good to have somebody like him, and he's still there theoretically as a factor. I'm sort of hoping that we can mod Hearts of Iron 4 so that it won't be quite which guy in which slot, but we can tweak it so it's a bigger, fuller sort of cabinet and that you can have people in there in multiple places where they sort of historically did with various, I don't know, expenses so that you can have Robert Lay's effect as a minister, but not necessarily as the arms minister, but just him there as a minister, which would throw in these pluses and minuses along with somebody like Tote with his pluses and minuses. And so that in some, some areas they would be working um, counter to each other. In other areas they'd be complementing each other. And it's that sort of um, thing. We have so many here because of the D-worm um, contributed uh, a bunch of other um, likely or possible ministers for the period, but they just have their... Um, generic sort of um, titles, you know, resource industrialists or whatever. But like Franz Xavier Short, uh, Schwartz um, is another one that could, because um, he was the um, sort of Nazi party organizer. I don't know how much he really was a resource industrialist, but that kind of thing. So um, there are other choices. And... I don't think they're, you know, this, of the specialties that I put in, I don't think there's better ones currently available to put in, but it's sort of a balancing act of who had, who, so theoretically they were all sort of still working, but who is the dominant one is how I look at this. And so we're looking at tote, um, more ICs, more crude oil, um, which also sort of represents, um, the expansion of the synthetic oil factories. Um, more resources, which is also sort of representing continuation of um, Reich's work, Hermann Goering's work as well. That's all in my mind factored into what um, which ones I picked. And um, construction practical delay, um, you know, kept those up even though like we're not building much now. Um, he very much was the construction guy. So that all comes into it. Now that it should be 5% or 6% or 20% on any of these things. I just sort of looked at what um, the basic game is so that we're not running um, way out of um, reality or r running way different than the, the values that Black Ice is using and Wild Ass Guesses, you know, because I don't know how much they they affected it in game terms, you know, and translating it into the game. So that part's wild ass guess to some degree, but what and why I picked is a based on my historical research. So we want to go over to Fritz Tote. And let's see, we're still going to do the him until the war, then we're going to go over to Ribbentrop. Now, I want to look and see, is Himmler available yet? Himmler, okay. ICs is down. Leadership modifier is increased. Ruling party support goes down. And partisan efficiency. But you get more national manpower and more leadership. Um, so Goebbels um, leadership similarly. Territorial pride national unity which very minor in the security ministry. And this is also, I sort of figured some of this out. Ruling party support. Um, hmm. I don't know, probably we should somewhat switch over because of the manpower issue. We want more and more of that and building up now and not set up just once the, the war starts and realize also we're going to get another radio broadcast that will increase things like national unity and territorial pride and ruling party support potentially. So um, he's going to be replaced with 
um, the radio tech soon. So we're, I guess we'll go over to Reichsführer SS charger here. The IC deficiency is um, basically is my view of, um, and it may not be so big now in 1940 or whatever, but um, later on it's sort of the, the final solution in the Holocaust that, yeah, you look at Schindler's List and other things that deal with the slave labor that they used, but they didn't set that slave labor up to be efficient because they were starving the slave labor to death and working them to death. If you, you know, this is not a, I don't think I'm pro advocating um, use of slave, but slaves potentially are a valuable thing. And once you get a worker who knows how to do a job, you don't want them to die off and have to train another worker who's going to be, yeah, he wants to survive, but if, but if he knows all he's going to eventually die in three months or six months or whatever, you know, there's not going to be a um, incentive to do a decent, you know, decent job. Not, not that slaves want to do a decent job, but still, you know what I mean. So I look at that as all the resources they put out to the Holocaust and all the camps, the the guards, um, all the support elements to to run that program. It's one thing to lock up a your sort of core activist dissidents. Again, not saying you should, but um, you know the the hardcore communists, the the leadership of the um, labor movements that are anti-Nazi. That's one thing, and it isn't going to completely disrupt your society. But trying to take out millions of people and managing that whole system is going to be a negative on your resources. So that's what I look at that as. Himmler has his costs. I guess you could try to run, and because we're no longer building, I probably should have changed this before. Um, and you, you I, like I was going to say, you could try to run a, a clean um, government by picking some of these, um, uh, you know, paternal aristocrat types and put them in places instead of national socialist and have if for your own emotional view of playing the game have non-nazis in most positions you could do that of course but obviously these two are fixed at the moment that could be modded you can mod it so you could change out hitler and you can change out all these guys and run sort of a you know you know a franz von poppen government kind of game if you wanted to but that's not what TRE is focused on or this playthrough is focused on, so we're not going to do that. Not a bad way to play. I'm not saying that. Okay. Um, Beck and Yodel are the two that have historical um, setup tweaks that I've looked at. Um, these are all positives. They're good. 10% in each one except for the last, which is practical delay, just 5%. We're here, better learn 15% and organizational rate regain much quicker, which I like that. Partisan efficiency because of whatever, so there's going to be more partisan capability. So that's the only negative. I think it's realistic because it's sort of historical. And we're going to go with that because I think that's, of the two choices, the best there and do we have somebody else we want to do other than Brahit? Don't ever put Hitler in charge. He's a control freak. He'll mess things up. Organizational regain rate will be bad. Keitel was not terribly good at that job. Basically you have such um, he, he basically gave in to Hitler way too much so putting him in charge of that is almost like putting Hitler in charge of charge of it is why I gave him such um, bad ratings. He just wouldn't stand up well to Hitler. And some of the others didn't stand up too great, but he was particularly bad in my opinion as Oberkommander over Wehrmacht. So, land organization gets a bonus, of course, but that's about it. So those, I think, are all the three that are specifically tailored. Um... So we're going to leave it with Brow Hitch. Do we want to go over to... 
use a decent choice here for this, putting Hydric on a head of intelligence. Um, he would have done the job. Um, Schellenberg here, Walter Schellenberg, which we saw in the um, one of the earlier events doing that, he was in charge of the SD's foreign intelligence. That was the job under Hydric. So this is sort of representing, um, you can either put Hydric in charge of it, you can put Himmler in charge of it, you can put um, Schellenberg in charge of it. These are all um, historical possibilities for head of intelligence. So now as you say this again, this goes back to, and I know I'm giving Nazi hierarchy theory lectures here, but I hope you're interested. Um, multiple people doing similar jobs or multiple agencies doing similar jobs because you also had Canaris, um, Wilhelm Canaris is in charge of um, the Abware, which was obviously the military's foreign intelligence. So you have that option. You have um, Frick, which, who was um, Reich Minister um, der Interior, which easily you could switch him over to um, which which what we have currently as foreign intel you know intel well it says head of intelligence it doesn't specifically say head of foreign intelligence so it could obviously be domestic intelligence so that maybe a bit more um, Otto Strasser should be removed by now that's a that's bad that it's there have an event because well I guess he's um, I think that may be one of the ones, I don't know if that's one of the ones that, um, one of the ministers that the deworm added or not. I'm not sure right offhand. But Strasser, um, by, he was in Czechoslovakia until that became, um, you know, the Nazis were closing in. And then he, uh, I think, went down to Spain or Portugal and then over to Canada. But he's an anti-Nazi, Nazi, although they, you hear he's called a fascist. But well, maybe more of a fascist, I don't know. But um, you also have a few other options here. But so these are all the ones that I, the the four that I guess I've that are currently available. Five, I guess it is with Schellenberg here. And one of the reasons I included Schellenberg is because um, depending on events, and historically Hydric dies. So if you wanted Hydric in charge of it. Once he dies, you have the option of going over to Schellenberg. The sort of the, the the plot. If you don't want to give it all to Himmler, and I also look at giving more to Himmler is even more and more of the final solution. So that's why you have the IC hit even more. If you give him the more power you give him within within the Nazi state, um, not just the increase of rule by terror. And not just increase of the police state, as you can see by all the police units, but um, the more for his mania of racial theory, more of his mania for um, neo-paganistic religions will come into play. Um, we've looked at the um, Vadelsberg Castle rebuild, and I have, I sort of cut it because it never really um, went anywhere. There is a these photos of a model that they drew up that was plans for turning it into a massively huge complex, almost city size, with still Vadelsberg as the center. I'm sure if you want to look them up, and they also some period um, sort of maps that were planned out that they had made, and um, he would be doing all of these types of projects. Maybe not doing all of that, you know, fully building the Vadelsberg in the middle of the war, but he would be starting, you know, oh, well, let's build this building or let's add this building and let's, you know. The more power you give to Himmler, the more his internal state will grow directly, though um, you have the options of giving the other um, SD types this role. As you can tell, I'm not going to, in this game, give Himmler this. Possibility of of Hydric, though I think we're going to keep Frick because I like that leadership modifier there and research efficiency though um, because of sort of I look at this um, it's only you know minor um, loss here for um, I see efficiency production that's just sort of police state um, versus here where I look at um, the leadership hit is because to get all these various um, intel bonuses he's dumping a lot of leadership into intel 
That's why I'm not picking Canaris at this time, at least. Partially also because I'm not a big Intel player. So, um, as a player, you will lose um, the four-year plan, and you can't get it back. I could be coded to get it back. But you will lose it if you remove Goering as a Minister of Armaments, even for a moment, so don't ever do that. Or if you go to war, and because I look at that as the idea during peacetime, as I know I've talked about this before, running a factory one shift a day, whether even at full capacity of that factory or not at one shift a day, is one thing which allows free labor labor to just expand build you know work on construction sites that um put up the infrastructure for a new mine even if they're not all going to be miners and part of that is you know and also the you know building rails in a rail factory you know rail steel factory to build rails that sh ship off to mines for you know all those infrastructure elements that are needed to build a mine in the first place M Increase, need a lot of labor even if they're not trained miners that are going down into the mines and doing that part of the expansion it's the like you see here some of the above ground works expansion for that so you have this labor that's construction labor that can be shifted around dynamically in your economy but once you change the laws going to and because i knew people once they no longer have the um negative hits for some of these in peacetime they would be going over to them so that just shows a labor shift so if you go to war like if you go to war in 38 or 39 you will lose the four-year um, plan at that point and if that if you get at that point remove Goering put in somebody probably tote if he's available but put in somebody Schneck is is, is a fine um, alternative not as good as tote for War, war element production but for your economy he would be better um, so if you go to war early you'll lose this or you can go to war on time in 39 you'll lose this or like as you see here the beginning of basically the beginning of, of 40 um, you will also um, lose this and so this is a notification basically to get rid of um, going and we will probably also see a shift in some of these values because we no longer have um, the effects of the four-year plan. Now we're not going back to what the um, when the four-year plan hits we also lose the starting um, TRE effects which are a bit of a nerf for Germany for the first few months so you're not going back to that you're just not getting all the benefits there I'm just looking for No, we're not buying crude oil. We're not going to war just yet. Okay, um, as we've talked earlier, and since we have not gone to war, uh, Japan, because of its actions in China, lost the rights to hold the um, Olympic Games in 1940. They had been scheduled to do so. And at this time, uh, Olympic Games had been held all in the same year, where now it's every two years you get the winter, and then two years later you get the summer, so... The Summer Olympics is every four years, which is what it, Olympics are every four years. But that's been broken out, and obviously we've broken out to different countries. I think this is the first year that they broke it out to the summer in Finland 
and the winner in Germany is in two different countries. So, since you're still at peace, if you're playing, if you play this way, you'll get this event, um, which will reduce, which I'm been sort of waiting for, um, reduce descent some more because hey, it's big. You know, Winter Olympics isn't as big as summer, but it's still a fairly big thing. The world is still at peace, and this is only going to happen if Germany's at peace. So, yeah, China's still at war with Japan, but now though they've taken it, but the warlords are still fighting out there, and so the world isn't. But in the world, tension's increasing. But this is a chance to low. Germany loses five threat on all, and it a chance to lower your intent. Your your um. Ten, world tension, if you will, right now, and get some bonuses there. So um, I didn't because it was scheduled, and you had an earlier opportunity to prepare for it. I think you, yeah, I know you had the event, but I don't know if you had the choice. But so I don't give a choice here. But so Germany holds its event if you're still at peace. And that is actually an actual poster that was made up in preparation for the. Olympics that didn't happen. Obviously, the Olympics didn't happen until after the war. Okay, large warship radar has advanced. That's good. Large warship. Oh, here. Read out. Okay. Um... Some decent choices of things to research there, but I'm just not... We're going to go, though, with this. Since we do have some battleships and we're building a few more, having um, better um, fire control for empty air is good for German ship. Oh, well, we still have some more ability to research. Let's do damage control systems here for all these smaller reducer damage potential or likelihood. Okay, I think this is a good time to um, end this episode. Again, thanks for viewing. Thanks for liking the videos. Um, sometimes I feel ridiculous saying that every time, but then I watch um, a lot of news shows and they say, "Thank you know, please like us on Facebook and whatever else. So I guess if it's good for big national news shows, it's and they've obviously tested this out to see whether it gets more people to like your videos or to um, subscribe or whatever. Um, so if they figured out it must work and be good, I guess I should do it as well. So things are looking good. We can take a quick look over at um, Japan's intervention in China. You can see they're coming in there on the borders of the capital. Though it looks rather mountainous, so probably be able to defend. Kung Min uh, was sort of the main um, southern uh, basing for uh, the Flying Tigers, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, a lot of the supply routes with the um, Burma Road while it was still open here. Um, these just don't even seem to have any, and that's probably mostly so that China or Japan doesn't just roll in along this. That could use some events to create um, there because it won't tell us exactly what the infrastructure is, but it will tell us if there's infrastructure. Um, they obviously did build the Burma Road series of events though that maybe put the game a little out of you know, allowing Japan. But once you build the road. Japan could. They, they were able to defend the road until they got flanked around here. But um, it's a very narrow thing. They were even able to defend it for a while with just pure air power. Uh, I don't know. Well, yeah, no, I believe because the way that the terrain is, Britain probably could have, um, you know, kept the Japanese from coming down the road. You know, I said the event, the um, episode's over, but I'm going on about this. Um could have defended the um, Burma Road because it was a very narrow front going through a mountainous terrain that I think would have 
with ability to do stage withdrawals really kept the um, Japanese from um, pushing through it without that it was um, coming through here and even this was pretty rough and I think the the British were entirely un like they were unprepared down here in the Malaya Peninsula operation with the Japanese landing and um, outflanking constantly the the British that's an interesting story of uh, of Japan's invasion of Malaya but um, because Burma at some times in some maps shows up as part of India and sometimes it's sort of um, put in, you know separate administration but there was no and I mean no physical connection between Burma and India no roads no paths no trails it was entirely mountainous jungleish um, terrible and all the British units that made it out um, including Stilwell, who marched out with his small cadre of, of Americans, uh, just did throw, did so through the raw jungle, and it took um, some, some of the units heavy casualties just marching out, and that was without, often without food, and maybe just carrying your rifles. It was just minimum, um, rich, rich, you know, straggling, just retreating out, not any sort of organized ability to move trucks or anything out. And... So the colonial setup for Burma was purely um, coming in via seas. And there were rails and there were, you know, railroads and there was infrastructure developed. Britain was doing that in Burma. It was not a completely neglected colony. It was just a um, sort of, um, you know, separate setup that used the uh, um, terrain of the sort of flat lowlands, if you will in here and the uh, rivers and didn't feel any need for a cross-border relation since Britain was a sea power so they did that. We could have a debate on the benefits or lack thereof of being a, uh, a British colony and I definitely believe there were benefits though of course there was also tremendous cost for the local peoples as well. I fully acknowledge that whether on balance it's better to have been a British colony or not or to not have been a colony at all or my opinion, though, being a colony of just about anybody else, except for maybe the Americans, if you look at like the Philippines, which was a de facto colony. Um, if you're going to be colonized by somebody, be colonized by the British. Just just saying that, you know, not saying you want to be colonized by somebody else and have imperial overlords, but if you're going to have them, go with Britain. Trust me, go with Britain on that. If, you, if ever that's a future question. Like I say, you might not feel you want to be colonized and might want to resist. Uh, you yeah. know. We Americans did that too, but I'm very happy that we have British roots, you know, but I'm very also happy that we got our independence too, so it's not that it's, you know. Okay, enough sort of that situation, but so we're looking at Japan here, still moving in. We've occupied all this part, and where's the capital? Well, it's way back here, so they got some time. Okay, thanks for listening again. Thanks for um, commenting and such on the videos.